morning stitchers and welcome back to my channel it is Saturday May 15th and we're getting ready to start the second half of stitch mania be sure to check out my part 1 video where I show you my progress from days 1 through 15 once again I apologize for my gruff voice but I just woke up and I haven't quite finished my coffee yet so uh, I get I started stitching on this and I realized I hadn't showed you my starting point yet so I quickly grabbed my phone so I can do a quick video clip here to show you where I'm starting. So as a refresher I'm doing Margeline Mania and um, this one is a work in progress that I started hey, I'm gonna say maybe 2019 is when I started it but it could have been 2018. So here is, and it's in the hoop, so I'm not going to show you everything. You can kind of get an idea of how much I've got done there. And I had said in my part one video that I was going to work on this large blue pumpkin here. But when I pull out the pattern and realize it's not a blue pumpkin in that space, it's actually this green gourd of some sort with the flower. So... Um, yeah, I think I was in my mind was thinking of that blue pumpkin, which was already stitched. So my goal is to work on this for about a week, and I would love to get this whole gourd done, which seems kind of like a lot, but I know that this project is really easy to stitch. There's not a whole lot of confetti stitching, and it's uh, it's a kit, so I'm just stitching everything. I'm just using everything that came with the kit, which is a 14-count Ada, and it's a really soft Ada. Really easy to work with. Ooh, look at that one. Isn't that pretty? I think I'm going to need to add that one to my collection. It's so pretty. Uh, anyway, let's look back to this. Okay. So, I'm going to work on it today. I was going to do some gardening. I still need to get my seedlings planted outside. But it's another cloudy, dreary day today. It's just hasn't warmed up that much and I'm kind of fearful that my seedlings aren't going to survive if I put them out there. I've been hardening them off now for like three weeks but being like a major plant babysitter. We even got down to 32 a couple of nights and I had to bring them in and and yeah they're just uh, they're in this holding pattern right now waiting to be planted but I'm just I don't know. Anyway, we're not talking about gardening. I'm making another whole separate video of that. You can check that out. I've only got part one of that one uploaded so far, but I'll do part two if I ever get these planted in the ground and can show you my progress on that. But right now, today, we're stitching a gourd. And I may go to the garden center, though, just to look around because it's spring, and that's what you do in spring. You go to the garden center. Okay, uh, I'm going to stitch on this and check in when I've got something to show you. All right, let's do this. It's me again. I can't ever say what I want to say in one clip, but I did want to mention what I'm going to be watching this morning while I stitch. Um, I'm revisiting The Handmaid's Tale. I started watching it, and I only made it through, looks like I'm on Season 2, Episode 8. And I was watching it, I think, at the end of last summer, and I stopped watching it. It just got too intense, and I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to continue watching it. But I did hear that season four has now been released, and everybody's starting to talk about it again. And then I get FOMO and figure I better catch up and see. And if not, I'll turn on something a little more cheerful. <laughs> All right. All right. Some time has passed. I got a refill on my coffee. I watched one episode of Handmaid's Tale. And I got one color of green completed. This area right here and that area right there. So what I'm going to do now is I've just switched color to a darker green. I'm going to watch one more episode of Handmaid's Tale. Still not sure what I'm thinking about that. I mean, I love the show. Like I said, I just, you have to be in the right mood. It's just so dark. But, uh. Yeah, I'm going to watch one more episode. I'm at least going to make it through season two before I make a decision whether to continue watching it or not. But for now, I am going to stitch uh, through one more episode, starting this new color. And uh, I'll check in one more time after that episode and show you where I'm at. 
Okay, stay tuned. All right, second episode of Handmaid's Tale is done. And coffee is empty. And this is what I got done during that episode. I've got the third color green loaded up on my needle, ready to go. But it's 11.30 a.m. And as much as I would love to sit and stitch the rest of the day, it's not really wise to do so since I do have a lot of other things I need to do. So I'm going to stop stitching for now. I'm going to go on a walk and I'm going to get some work done and, you know, all that adulting stuff. Um, but just as soon as I can, I'm going to park myself right back down on this spot later today or this evening and continue where I left off. So I'm on that. I just completed season, I mean, uh, episode 10 of season two. So there's four more episodes left of this season and this one this last episode left with some intrigue, so I will continue watching it. See where it goes. Okay, that's it for now, guys. I'm going to go get some stuff done, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Or should I say, blessed be the fruit, may the Lord open. Here we are 24 hours later and I'm sitting in my same stitching spot getting ready to do some stitching. I did do some chores first before I sat down this time because I have a confession to make. You know in that last clip when I said I was done stitching and I was going to go do uh, some things that needed to be done? Well, I ended up watching one more episode of Handmaid's Tale. <sighs> yes, I watched one more episode and did some more stitching and then went out and had a semi-productive day and then stitched, watched three more episodes last night and got some more stitching done. And now I am done with season two. And this was the progress I got done. So this is what stitching through six episodes of Handmaid's Tale looks like. Yeah, making some progress on that big green gourd. I'm calling it a gourd. It's probably a squash probably huh squash or something uh so yep yeah, that's where it's at you can see the nice outline of where the flower is going to go and i'm going to continue doing a little more of the green i'm going to get all the green done then i'll start in on the flower but it's coming right along so i think i'm not going to watch handmaid's tale today i'm going to hold off on season three that's a bit intense and i think watching six episodes in one day was um, yeah, enough. I'm going to watch something. Maybe I'll put on a good 80s movie or something. While I'm thinking about it, though, I was just spent some time sitting out on my deck, and I was answering comments to Part 1, Stitch Mania Part 1, and somebody had said, um, I think her name was Gigi, had commented on my, let me grab it, my scissor fob that I've been, that I always use, this little chipping sparrow, and it comes in a uh, two-pack with the nest, and she wanted to know if I had stitched the nest because she said she's stitching the nest. And I know I've showed this in a previous video, but just in case you haven't seen that, I did want to show, I told her I would show this in my, uh, in this video so that she could see it. So yes, these two come in a pattern by the Crossed Wing Collection, and it's called Biscor Nest, and this is the Chipping Sparrow, and they have also the Cardinal, and I know there's, I think, a Hummingbird one too. So the eggs are done one over one. I don't do much one over one stitching, so those were, that was a bit of a challenge, but fun to do. Um, yeah, so the back looks like that. It's got some little beads around the edges there, so just so cute. I keep it next to me. I do have usually some more pins and needles in it, but I keep my snag nabbits here. Do you guys use snag nabbits? If you don't, it's... Let me see if it's focusing here. It's just one of those tools, you know, it's it's for, like when you have a, uh, uh, what's it called, like a loose weave in your sweater or something like that and you want to fix it. But this is awesome. Here, I've got two sizes. I don't use the big one much because it's a little too big, but it just kind of has a sort of a rough edge on it. And then when you have a stitch that's not behaving, you just, uh, you know, stick it through the fabric and it fixes, you know, sort of straightens up the stitch. But I use this all the time. So I always keep it right next to me. 
at all times and fix those funky looking stitches that just don't want to lay straight. But yeah, okay, so that's it. That's the nest and the cute little, ch oh, the chipping sparrow is a one over one too. So cute. Okay, I'm going to get to stitching. I have a lot to do today because I didn't do anything much yesterday. I did go to the garden center, but it is so cold. I was outside and it was just this drizzling. It kind of was drizzling on me and it was cold and I was shivering because I wasn't dressed warm enough. I mean, it's just this cold weather is just dreary and it's not making me motivated to do anything but want to sit and stitch. But I can't do that. I have things I have to do, so... All right, well, um, I'm probably not going to check in anymore today. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch, and then I think I'll check in again when I have the green all done. So, all right, uh, did I say it was Sunday? I don't think I did. It's Sunday, May 16th today. So, all right, guys, see you at the, in the next check-in. Good morning, stitching friends. It's Sunday, May 23rd. Another week of Stitch Mania has gone by. We have one week and one day left. And I'm sitting on my deck this morning. It is sunny. The birds are chirping. I've got my coffee. And I'm going to do some stitching. But before I do that, I wanted to pop in here and show you the progress that I made on Marjolaine Baston's pumpkins since the last clip. So... I'm very happy to report that I reached my goal. I'm so thrilled. My goal was to stitch this gourd, zucchini gourd looking thing here with the flower. And I completed that. And it was thoroughly enjoyable. Loved every minute of it. And I was going to continue working on this. But, um, I... So if I was close to getting a finish on this one, I would probably be more motivated to get started on it, but I think that it's definitely going to take me longer than a week to do what's left. Um, so, you know what, let me take it out of the hoop and show you where I'm at. That way you can kind of see what I've done and what I have left to do. So let me put you on pause and get it out of the hoop. All right, I took it out of the hoop, and it's very wrinkled and crinkly, and I don't really have a table to lay it out on, but... This kind of gives you the idea of where I'm at. So I would say, what do you think? I'm about two thirds, probably two thirds done with it. I mean, making, getting this done was a huge progress. Yes, I just got this bottom corner to do here. And before I put it away, I may finish that one string that I have hanging right there because I don't usually like to put my projects away with a string hanging there and that's how I had left it before I picked it up and then I ended up starting in this area this last time so I may just stitch that one finish stitching that one piece of floss before I put this one away so now we are once again we're to the point where we need to make a decision I don't know why I keep saying we like there's more than one of me but <laughs> I guess I'm I'm talking about the collective we that are doing Stitch Mania. We have to make decisions, if we haven't already, about what to do going into the final week of Stitch Mania. And I actually got a head start already. I have been doing some secret stitching, so to speak. Not really secret, only in the sense that I haven't told you about it yet because I haven't picked up my camera to record. But in addition to working on this... I found myself sitting upstairs and not having this one next to me and my husband and I were having coffee and I the only project I had sitting next to me was this one let me hold on let me put you on pause so I don't shake the camera while I put this one away okay this is the one that I I picked it up and I thought well I'm just going to sort the floss because those of you that do mill hills know that the floss comes unsorted so I sat there and thought well I'm just going to sort the floss and get it ready for the final week when I start this. And then after I sorted the floss, I thought, well, okay, let me go ahead and find my starting point and get the needle ready. And of course, you know, by then, it's kind of hard to resist not just going ahead and taking some stitches. So this past week, when I'm sitting on my main floor and watching whatever I'm watching or listening to, whatever podcast, ooh, which I will, I have something to say about that here in a minute. But 
when I sit upstairs and have coffee with my husband in the morning and we're just chatting, then I like to have something to stitch on there. So this was what I've been working on in the mornings this past week. And I got the water pump almost completely done. And that is uh, shaping up to be a bird. Let me get a closer look here. So let me put this under here. Okay, so yes, that will be a bird, even though it doesn't look like it. Another bird there. The back stitching is definitely going to make that look better, but the water pump is taking shape. There's going to be a big barrel full of flowers there, as you can see. So I'm loving working on this. So the question is, do I continue working on this as my sole product project this week? Because if I do, I can probably get all the stitching done. Probably not the beading, but definitely the stitching. Or do I start a new Margellan Baston, the birdhouse one? That's the question. But my only hesitation on that is because I bought something, and I don't have it to show you yet. And I'm really, really hoping it's going to show up. It's back ordered, and I'm really hoping it's going to show up before mania is over because I would rather show you it than just tell you about it. But if it doesn't show up, then I'll just have to post a screenshot on my final update. But I'm really hoping that's going to be here, and if it's here, that's the one I want to start. So, yes, we'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. So maybe I'll just work on this one this week. But, you know, sometimes I like to throw in a surprise, so maybe I'll start something completely unplanned. But right now, today, this is what I'm going to work on because I'm really enjoying it. Oh, and I did want to show you that I did uh, purchase this one too, another Mill Hill. This, since I'm so into my doing my flower gardening right now, I thought this was an appropriate one, which I'm not going to start this one yet. Maybe I'll work on that one in June. But I'm certainly not going to start that one until this one gets finished. Okay, that's all I have for the update now, and I'll try to check in a few times this week, but I can't promise it. I may not see you again, or you may not see me again until next Sunday or well okay we technically the last day of the month is Monday but um, yeah um, I really really quickly want to give a shout out because I I said I was going to tell you what I was watching slash listening to this past week I have continued on with The Handmaid's Tale I'm on season three episode five but I'm taking it kind of slow small doses but I had a distraction from that because I was watching a, I want to give a shout out to a fellow floss tuber, Pam's Crafty Corner. If you aren't following her, I'm going to put a link below, but she started a new playlist on her channel called Coffee, Crime, and Crafts. And I was listening to her most recent episode, which as of the filming of this is her most recent episode. She might have another one after that by the time you see it. But I'm going to put a link below. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. It was about, um, I'm not going to give you too much details because I highly recommend you pop over to her channel and give it a listen. She did a lot of research and just gives a wonderful recap of this case that's been going on for 25 years. And it's about a missing persons case about Kristen Smart, who disappeared from um, Poly, California Polytechnic college I can't remember polytech Cal Poly I'm not sure what they call it but anyway it happened in way back in 1996 and there have been recent developments in that case now which makes it very very interesting and I'm not going to give any away but after listening to Pam's uh, podcast about it she left a link below on another podcast that goes in really in depth about it and it's like eight episodes long each episode is over an hour so if you like true crime podcasts, especially ones that have had recent developments, I highly recommend popping over to Pam's channel and giving that a listen. Okay, for now I'll check in when I've got something else to show on this. Hey Stitchers, welcome to the end of Stitch Mania. Yep, another Stitch Mania has gone by. And just like that, I'm starting to lose my sunlight. It looks like the sun just went behind a cloud, so I really hope this is going to show up. Uh, let's see, we last spoke a week ago, and I can't remember if I showed you that I had started this. I, I, I should have looked back at that clip. I think I did. I think I showed you that I started this, and I was going to continue working on this for a week. 
And that's exactly what I did. So this is where I'm at. Let me, I don't know if you can see. Let me lay it flat there on the table. So let me get a little bit closer. Hopefully I'm staying in frame. Let me check. Yes, okay, so what you're seeing there is all the stitching is done with the exception of this light colored background right here, which if you look at this is kind of, oh, sort of this mm, kind of patch around the outside, but I think I'm going to go ahead and stitch all of the background that color. So I still have quite a bit left to do of just that one color before I can start the beading and just a tiny little bit of back stitching needs to be done around the birds and uh, I think a little bit down here in the flowers. So I think what I'm going to continue, I really wanted to get this done in May, but it didn't happen. And so I think what I'm gonna do is get this, uh, can continue working on this in June because I wanna get to the beading. And sorry about all the, if you see paint on my fingers, I was helping my son with a spray paint project yesterday. And uh, yeah, that won't come off. Okay, so between gardening and spray painting, my hands probably look horrible. Okay, but so just focus your eyes on the stitching instead. Okay, um, I don't think there's anything more I need to say about that, except that I can't wait to get the beading done and get a finish for this in June. Now, in that last clip, I also told you that I was waiting for a project that I was really excited about, sort of an impulse buy, and sort of. I had been seeing some people stitch it, and then I was kind of waffling back and forth whether or not it, it was, it's a bit pricey for me for a kit, but I don't know, it's really not pricey if you think about the cost of the fabric and you know the floss and everything like that. But anyway, it was back ordered and it showed up on Saturday, the 29th, and I started it on Sunday, May 30th. I just couldn't wait any longer as I opened it up and I started looking at it and I just, next thing you know, I'm, I'm planning to get the first stitches in. And I figured what better day than my mom's birthday. It's her 79th birthday and I know she watches my channel. Hi mom. I'm gonna dedicate this project to you because it's a beautiful project and just like you, a beautiful person inside and out. And it is by Lenart, Marjolyn Baston's new special edition Four Seasons. Now, if you watched part one, you'll know that I already did a Marjolaine Baston Four Seasons, and this is a brand new one that came out. And guys, this thing is massive. Let me make sure I'm staying in frame for the whole thing. And let's, let's zoom in here a little bit. So you can see all of the goodness of all the seasons. So there you've got spring, And then over here, you got summer. Oh, these foxgloves right there, I just love those. I wanted to jump right in and start stitching that part. And then down here, you've got fall. And then winter. Now, when I first saw this, I was thinking, wow, that's beautiful. But what sort of hesitated, what the, the hesitation I had a little bit is that the colors for me seem a little bit brighter than um, most of the, the projects that I stitch from her are sort of just, they're colorful, but they're more of a subdued, muted tones. And this was almost so bright that I thought it didn't really capture the essence of Marjolaine's artwork. but. It does. I mean, if you look at her, you know, her actual watercolors and stuff like that, but I just can't resist it. I mean, it's a special edition and I just, I knew that if I didn't get it, I would regret it someday. So I really, really, really hope that I can get this done in my lifetime because it's massive guys. Okay. I mean, I knew it was big, but now I know a lot of you that do those giant samplers, you know, I think his eyes on the sparrow is a big one that comes to mind and oh, long dog samplers, you know, those those are all huge. I have never done anything that huge. So, I think I gasped a little when I took the fabric out of this <laughs> because it measures like about 24 inches 
by 35 inches. Okay, that's like three feet. I'm only five feet tall. So if I like add a little bit of fabric on the outside of this, I could use it as a throw blanket, which is not a bad idea. I may do that because this thing would be massive to have to frame. So yeah, it's big. So oh, you wanna see it. You wanna see my start. Oh, let's just show you what I've done so far. Oh, but first, let's just admire these colors. So they are very, very bright. So you've got all the creams, and I'm, I think there's every single color that you could possibly think of. Okay, not really, but still. It's got definitely all the colors of the rainbow. You got, you know, everything from whites and creams to all the different shades of greens, a little bit of blue and purple. You've got a lot of the brown tones here, and then you got the grays and the blacks. So there's a lot of beautiful colors. And this is my start. Let me move this out of the way. Let me move my coffee out of the way because I no doubtedly will stick part of this big massive piece of fabric into my coffee cup. Okay, and this is the start that I got so far. So this is up in the spring corner. Now, this, okay, so I hadn't even actually, trying to find the center of this thing was tricky because I don't think I've ever worked on a pattern that has, let me pull this out without showing you. I mean, yeah, yeah you're going to see a little bit of the chart, but, you know, that's okay. It's, there's, you can't do too much with that. But, you know, let's just look at this here. Okay, so, you know, there's all these pages here. And so I had to lay them out. I think there's like... I don't know, there's, um, let me see here. I think it shows the, the layout of the pattern on one of these, let me see. Oh yes, so. So here's the pages. So yeah, it's it's to me, it's kind of like a heaven and earth design, except that it's not full coverage. So I mean, I know this for, for a lot of you, this isn't that big because yes, it's obviously not full coverage. And you know, if it were a heaven and earth design, it would be this many pages and full coverage. So, but for me, it's still very massive. So to find the center, it was like somewhere in here. And then I needed to count over because I like to start up in the upper right corner and in order to do that, I would have like had to find the middle and then count like, you know, 160 stitches out here and so many up and, you know, that was going to be tedious. So what I'm going to do is I took what the measurement of, they say, what the finished design was. And then I just went ahead and it looked like it left me about three inches on each side for the, for the pattern to start. And I still just decided to give myself a little bit less. So I think this is probably about two and a half inches here. And I just went and found a spot up in the corner. And now I'm hoping, which I, I don't know that there's any reason to believe that it won't fit on here or that I didn't, you know, that the whole pattern won't fit because, you know, they easily probably left me two to three inches. I don't, I never trust my math. I'm not a good math person. So even though I took the tape measure and sort of mapped out where 25 by 35 inches would be, you know, it did have at least three inches all around, but, you know, I'm just hoping that was a good place to start. Let's just put it there, because <laughs> wouldn't it be horrible to get all the way to the end of this and find that it was off the fabric? But there's just no way. There's no way it will be. So I started in the upper right corner, and I'm going to continue working on the spring section. I just did this little piece right there, and... I'm going to probably go over and work on this butterfly, a little bit more of the, the border. And I'm going to continue working on this through June. So I don't think there was anything else I wanted to say on it. This does look like it's a 14 count type of even weave. It doesn't say what kind it is, but it is a 14 count. So um, pretty easy to stitch on, pretty easy to see. And so I guess that's all I need to say about that. I mean, you can... You can kind of see, I mean, I, I have to wrangle this fabric, so I'm going to have to probably get me some, like, grime guards or some good clippies because this thing, 
yeah, I mean, I don't even know how you keep, how I'm going to keep all this fabric clean for, you know, as long as I have to work on it, but, you know, let's see, I mean, just... goes on and on and on. I mean, the fabric just goes on and on and on. So, yeah, like I said, it can be a, a throw blanket for me. Okay, well, I think that's all there is that I need to say about what I finished in May. I want to get this video uploaded so you guys can see it. Hopefully today before the day is done. And I think going on into June, I'm going to work on, I'd like to continue working on this and get a finish on this. I'm going to continue working on this and uh, try to set some goals for myself of maybe I want to get, you know, what I want to get done. I mean, it's kind of easy to just say, oh, I'll work on this motif or that motif because there's a lot of different, you know, ways to set easy goals on this. So that should work out. But um, I was chatting with a stitching friend of mine, Wendy Davis. Hi, Wendy. I'm sure you all have known her. She's been part of the floss tube community for probably as long as I have, I'm sure, maybe even longer. And uh, she texted me not texted me but sent me a message saying that she had this pattern this uh, kit kit fried by dimensions called bird post and she was going to start it and she sent me a picture of her start and when I saw that I thought you know I have had this in my in my uh, whip pile for many years I actually don't know how long I've how long it's been since I've started this but when I saw her working on it and she said she was going to work on hers in June and I said you know what Wendy I'll pull mine out and you've given me the motivation I need to put some stitches in mine because it's just a project I've been working on for way too long. So I pulled it out and this is how far I've gotten on it. But considering the amount of years I've been working on this, yeah, it should have been done years ago. So I pulled that out and told her that for June, I will work on mine too. And I'll stitch along with, while well, she's working on hers, I'll stitch on mine and try to get something done. Maybe I'll try to get the flower done or something like that or some of the background. But when I pulled it out, it had masking tape. I had masking taped the edges, which is how I used to do it on a lot of my stitching. And it never really bothered me doing it that way because I always would just cut the masking tape off when I was done. And but this project, the masking tape has been on for years and years and, I, and it was really looking kind of dingy. And I thought, well, I'm gonna take that off and serge the edges. So I took the tape off and as many of you know that it used to use tape or maybe if you still do when you've left the tape on there for a long time, well, that residue that gets on your fabric just doesn't come off. So I even washed this and couldn't get that residue off. So I had no choice but to cut that gunky edging off, which kind of, Took a little bit more of my project than I wanted it to so I couldn't really get it in the hoop or the cue snap because the edge of the fabric was like right there so I had to take some some fabric scraps and sew it onto the outside so that I could put this in my cue snap so those uh, that that's just some temporary fabric just to give me something to give the the cue snap something to hold on to but this is a beautiful project and I'm looking forward to working on that so in June, my plans are to get some stitches into this, some stitches in this, and this one to get it completely done. And I think that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this uploaded so you guys can see my last part of Mania. And I want to thank you all for stopping by and for visiting with me today. And I hope that your plans involve some kind of stitching for today. Okay, that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm horribly, I've been horrible about posting anything on Instagram lately. I have been completely slacking on my Instagram account, so one of these days, you're probably gonna see a whole bunch of pictures being uploaded because I don't think I uploaded anything that I did in May. Yeah, so I really need to get going and get my act together and get my Instagram feed up to date. 
Okay, that's it guys. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you sometime later this summer when I have something fun to show you. Have a fantastic June and I will see you soon.